Hi there. In this video I'm going to show you how to remove the steering wheel and firstly the airbag in a Volkswagen Lupo. First thing, go and disconnect your battery and wait for at least 15 minutes because we are dealing with an airbag and we don't want it uh, to set off. And we are here and I prefer to disconnect the negative. I'm not sure which one of them is the correct one, positive or negative, but I feel like uh, it's better for me to work on the negative because uh, the whole chassis of the car is a negative. So when it's off, basically the positive has nothing else to connect to by mistake. Make sure you put it in there deeply so it doesn't pop out by itself and somehow connect this. If you have a battery cover from a new battery or something like that, put it on, just to be sure. What you want to do now, put in the ignition and rotate it just enough. Ah, I need to move the steering wheel a little bit to allow me. So this is not locked anymore because you need to rotate it like this and on the back of it there's a hole in that hole we need to put in a flathead screwdriver and i will show you what to do with it so here we are keep it on the lower part of the hole as you can see i'm right at the bottom of the hole and push it in there until you are able to get behind something but i'm not yet there I might need to might need to remove this cover which has two Phillips screws at the sides and a Torx T25 in the middle and this, this comes off only clips hold it together if you have a shorter screwdriver you might be able to do it from the top but I don't have one so uh, <clears throat> need to do it from the bottom so this comes out undid the screws again one right there one there and one there and now you simply uh, start yanking on it and it will slowly come apart yeah quite hard to do with one hand but it is doable and it's out now we should have way more room in there Yep, and I'm locked behind it. So look at the airbag. You could see it move. So now the bottom of it is unlocked. Don't let it lock, so put something un underneath it here. Because we need to do the same on the other side, but we need to rotate the steering wheel so the other side is at the bottom now. This is literally not allowing it to lock back in place. So now, yes, it will go quite hard. We don't have the servo. <laughs> Uh, now we do the same from uh, the bottom part. And at this point it's unlocked on both sides. It's still holding a bit at the bottom but we will start yanking on it slowly. Remove the screwdriver, slowly pull it but it will try to lock at the bottom so I cannot do this with one hand without damaging anything. Be careful because when it unlocks it will try to come out fully and you might uh, rip the airbag cable. Again, have your car without uh, a battery contact uh, for at least 15 minutes with the battery disconnected. So this I need to do off camera. So I don't... Ah, oh, actually I managed to do it. And you can see this. We need to disconnect two things. Firstly being the airbag cable, kind of hard for me to film and also show you that. Uh, yeah, I think I need to put a flat head underneath it so it helps me pop it out and it's out and uh, the connection for the uh, horn yeah really everything is stubborn in here and I just bent it so uh, try not to do that 
Ah, come on, I need both hands to pull this out. It's really hard to get out. Be back in a second. I have never in my life seen this type of connector holding so hard. You can see how it scratched this when it went out. And I basically used two pliers and a lot of wiggling to get it out. But hey, we have the airbag out. Put it aside. You normally put an airbag with this face down in case, God forbid, it activates by itself. At least it doesn't get propelled in the air. In theory, if you want to remove the airbag coil from the steering wheel itself, you need to undo this and these torque screws. I don't want to do that. So basically, uh, I need to disconnect it right here. Two clips. And now it should be coming uh, along with the airbag. But try to not rotate it. Because if you rotate it more, you will have a problem when you rotate the steering wheel, when you put everything back together, you can rip it. So make sure it stays in this position. It has its limits here, but when you remove the steering wheel, these limits don't help it and you can go 180 or 360 degrees all around and that's bad. So maybe even tape it to this to make sure it doesn't move. Make sure you know the middle because you don't want to be installing this back at an angle. We have a marking from the start on that. I put a little bit more black marker on it just to make sure it's there. And I also marked on this. But hopefully we also have a marking when we remove this. Which is an uh, M24 socket, hex socket. So let me get that out of the way. It's tight, but not overly tight to say like that. So, uh, yeah, with normal tools and holding the steering wheel like this, it's uh, doable. If you have a second person to hold the steering wheel, even better. And we do have a marking also on the steering wheel. You can see that little dot. So, uh, actually, no, that's the steering column. What's that? Yeah, it's the steering column. So we kind of align the marking. Uh, they are not fully aligned, about one millimeter off at the moment, you can see, but uh, yeah, it's okay. Now, in theory, from what I know, you can just wiggle it out. And here it is, with this, which again, you want to make sure it remains in the proper position. It actually has some kind of auto lock. Doesn't rotate more than this by itself, but I uh, add it to that. And this is what disengages the auto lock from what I can see. Okay, interesting. So maybe the position is more important when you install a new one. Not sure. But uh, you make sure that you are in the middle with this and it can rotate the same amount to the left and to the right. So you don't rip it when you turn your wheel. Let's put in the steering wheel. Make sure you align the dot with the line. And then put uh, on the not this you need to tighten really well you really don't want that coming loose by itself now that i'm looking at it i think this is actually the release that allows this to start uh, rotating as much as it wants not what i thought before i think this is it plugged in the airbag and also this which is the contact for uh, the horn itself uh, so uh, Let's push this in place and uh, basically lock it in. But I kind of want to do this with both hands to be able to align it well. Now we can stay well out of the way and plug in the airbag. And it's plugged in. Let's start putting on the covers. In theory you just come with it right here. Make sure this goes in the slot because it has its... Uh, a dedicated little slot and it has a ton of clips all around so it's basically just a game of uh, making sure you don't break them while you clip it in but I cannot do this uh, with one hand I think although started to go in actually let's do the other side and be back when it's finished make sure you are at the correct level also like this but I don't think it goes in other way Put in the Torx middle screw. Uh, this is gonna be fine to align. Fun and games. 
Ah, I think I need to align it with my hand and only tighten it. Uh, yeah, and only now tighten it. Really? Ah, finally. Be back when this is tightened. Now put back the two Phillips screws, one on each side. Let's put back the contact and hope for the best. Basically it's just a matter of uh, aligning it. Oh, and I think I left the contact on in the car. That's a bad idea. Make sure the contact is not, not switched on in the car when you connect it. Take two. Move it in the correct position. Press it down if you can while tightening. But uh, the same thing as always, both hands required. Properly tightened. Let's go and see what it does. And that's about it for this video. Everything is back in place and working uh, perfectly. So, hope it helps you. In which case, please give it a like. Check out my other videos and as always, see you in the next one. Bye.